Now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis, Revenge of the Cyber Goddess. The Goddess Next Door takes on the threat of a deadly digital diva driven to destroy the world in this action-packed all-new Isis series adventure. Get Isis, Revenge of the Cyber Goddess featuring a bonus pin-up and the other two books in the Cyber Goddess saga at online bookstores everywhere today. Director Richard Donner passed away this week at the age of 91. Now, Richard Donner had a major impact on my generation, Generation X, and his films practically defined the generation that I was a part of. And I really didn't realize how much of an impact Richard Donner had on me growing up until I started to really take a critical look at all of the films he's credited with being a part of. Now your Richard Donner, he originally started out in the 60s going out here directing TV shows like your Zane Grey Theater, which was an old black and white show, and eventually by the 70s he started going out here making films. And one of the films that really had a major impact on my generation that many people don't know about is the film The Omen. Now, The Omen was meant to be a competitor to The Exorcist, which came out a couple of years prior, but The Omen became an iconic 1980s film, and that was the first film that Richard Donner helmed. Now, your Richard Donner is known primarily for the Superman movie that came out in 1978. And the Superman movie that he made was the one that practically defined the character for my generation because his version of Superman was the version of Superman that I practically grew up with. The Christopher Reeve Superman, the late Christopher Reeve, is considered to be the Superman of Generation X and the approach that Richard Donner used for his Superman film was the one that practically defined superhero movies for my generation. Now, Richard Donner decided not to go out here and approach Superman with the campy approach that was used for the 1966 Batman series. No, Richard Donner decided to approach the Superman character in a straightforward fashion, staying true to the comics. And as he stayed true to the Superman comics, he applied the approach of verisimilitude. Now, this approach of verisimilitude was major to the themes of the Superman movie in that the Superman character was presented as someone who represented hope and was a friend to everyone. So his approach to Superman gave us a Superman who was somebody who we all could relate to, somebody we all could trust, and somebody we could all feel like was a hero who was out to look out for us. So his Superman was a defining character of Generation X, and it was one of the greatest superhero movies, I say, of all time. Because when you look at Richard Donner's Superman, it's not just a story of a hero, it's a story of a man going out here and fighting for the American dream, of, and also going out here fighting for truth, justice, and the American way. So the 1978 Superman was a very powerful film because it just was one of, again, an adaptation that not only captured the spirit of the Superman comics, but captured the heart of the Superman comics. And because it captured that spirit and heart of the Superman comics, this is why we could believe a man could fly. The whole premise of the Superman film was to get you to believe that this man was super, but what made him super was not his Kryptonian powers powered by the Yellow Sun, it was his love for people and his heart. And that's one of the things that resonated with your Richard Donner's Superman and one of the things that made Christopher Reeve's performance, I mean the late Christopher Reeve's performance, 
outshine any performance of the Cal L character overall because your Richard Donner put so many layers and so much depth into his version of Superman that you saw a rich multi-dimensional presentation of DC Comics I seminal superhero now Richard Donner went on after making Superman to make the sequel Superman 2 and he was going out here looking to film both Superman and Superman 2 at the same time unfortunately there was an issue with the Salkins as related to a producer on the production I believe his name was Spangler and they wanted to fire that producer but Richard Donner stood up for him and as a result the Salkins because they saw that Richard Donner was doing things in a way they didn't like they wound up firing Richard Donner from Superman 2 and then recruited Richard Lester to direct Superman 2 unfortunately this was a really major mistake for the Superman franchise because if you watch the director's cut of Superman 2 you can see that Donner made a far superior film and he was further exploring the human condition as related to the Superman character so there was a lot of really good stuff in Superman 2 and I have to say it is a far superior film to the original Superman because we saw that your Superman was um, somebody who again really cared about people and that was the core of the character was he had this great love for people and he had this love for doing what was right by people and he ultimately realized after confronting the three rogue Kryptonians he needed to do what was best for the people so that was one of the most powerful messages as related to Superman 2 unfortunately the theatrical version is not as good as the Donner version and at about seven or eight years old I believe I saw the original director's cut on ABC I remember watching that one at at home and again it's a very powerful film well really I don't know if I was seven or eight years old but I was I was very young when I watched that version of Superman 2 when it came on TV but I saw it and again it's it, it's a far superior film and I saw it again and it is a far superior film to the original Superman 2 that Richard Donner was not credited for now your Richard Donner also went on to make other many iconic films in the 80s and while he had a dud or two like the toy which starred Richard Pryor and Jackie Gleason he also made many other again iconic films for 80s fans now Lady Hawk was not really a big hit back in the 80s but it was a major film for the 80s because that was one of the films that Michelle Pfeiffer got her start in and after that Richard Donner also directed The Goonies which was one of the biggest films of the mid 80s and it's considered to be one of the great films of the mid 80s I mean people still talk about The Goonies till this day and that movie again was a defining film of my generation and is considered one of the big films of the 80s now your Richard Donner also then went on to make the film Scrooge with Bill Murray now a lot of people don't see that as a major film but in the 80s that was considered to be one of the big films of the 80s If you grew up in the 80s you knew all about Scrooge and then you also knew about the film he made after Scrooge which was an adaptation of A Christmas Carol the Lethal Weapon franchise now the Lethal Weapon franchise was again another major franchise and your Richard Donner came on it with Lethal Weapon 2 and again Lethal Weapon 2 was a big film and it's like Peter Griffin said in Family Guy just like the bad guys in Le Lethal Weapon 2 I have diplomatic immunity and again that's a major part of that film but again Richard Donner was one of the big forces as related to that franchise and that franchise was again one of the, the big franchises of the 80s because that was the franchise that practically made Mel Gibson a star and a household name and made Danny Glover a major player in black cinema so that was a major film that a lot of people who are Millennials and Gen Z don't really know about 
but if you were a Gen Xer or a Gen Y, early Gen Y, you knew about Lethal Weapon, and if you were a little, if you knew something about the 80s, you would know that Scrooge was a big film, and you would also know that, again, there were other films that Richard Donner made during the 90s that really showed, again, a major impact with Generation X, and I didn't really, again, know that he was that influential because he made films like Maverick with um, Mel, I think it was Mel Gibson again. And again, Maverick was a big film in the 90s. That was a blockbuster and in the 90s. That, that adaptation practically was one of the big films of the 90s. And the same thing with um, films like Assassins with Antonio Banderas and Sylvester Stallone. Those, those were, again, huge films in the 90s and that just, again, showed the impact of your Richard Donner overall. But what a lot of people don't know is, for, who are comic fans is that your Richard Donner also had a major impact as a producer on, the, on comic franchises. Now, your Richard Donner was the guy who went out here and he produced the 2000 X-Men and he also went on to produce other X-Men films like X-Men Origins. So this just again shows the impact that your Richard Donner had on people. Oh, I forgot about the 90s franchise Free Willy because Free Willy was a huge film in the 90s. That was a blockbuster and he directed that film as well and he also produced those films. So Richard Donner had a major impact on the shaping of many of the cultural, cultural films of the gener of Generation X, and it just hearing about his passing again, it, it was a major shock to me when I heard about it because I understand how much impact he had on the culture of America in the 80s. Because many of these films, again, many of these films were major parts of my growing up and people like Mr. Superboy, us growing up. and. That's why when I was watching Mr. Superboy's video about getting older, it just resonated with me because again, these were the people, they, they, were, they shaped our childhood and now they are passing and that really, really makes me again think about things like mortality um, because I'm 47, gonna be 48. And again, Richard Donner was 91, so that shows us that we don't really have much time on this earth and that we really need to make everything count. And I believe Richard Donner went out here and he lived a very full life. God gave him an opportunity to go out here and make some of the greatest films and TV shows like Tales from the Crypt out here and, and really shape the way an entire generation saw themselves and saw their culture. And he went out here and made, and made a major impact on the overall aspects of cinema. Again, taking us to high levels of hope with Superman and then going on to the X-Men franchise. Again, he just went out here and made a rich, diverse catalog of movies and he's going to have a lasting legacy on generations to come because when I look at Richard Donner's whole catalog of work, he has put together some of the greatest films of the 1980s and 1990s and many of these films will won't be easy to forget it won't be easy to go out here and forget many of the great films that he has presented and many of these films you're going to really again remember many of them because once you see his catalog of films you're just going to look at it and go wow this man practically again shaped the way we saw ourselves for an entire generation and his passing again is something that is just going to have an impact on you and again richard donner was a again a truly great filmmaker and a brilliant um visionary and it will he will be greatly missed by many for years to come now if you want to see me make more videos like this you can donate to my patreon my paypal or my cash app by clicking the links in the description box and if you want to pick up some of my SJS Direct publications like the Isis series, the e Steam series, the John Haynes series, and the books of the Spinsterella trilogy, you can find those books on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find them on Smashwords, the iBookstore, and Google Play. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.
Now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, E-Steam, The Sands of Time. It's action and adventure in ancient Egypt in this terrific teen time travel romance. Get your copy of E-Steam, The Sands of Time at your favorite online bookseller today.